Hello, David. Um, Gabriel. Hello. Hello. Um, I was trying to fix up the coffee, but I ordered it to downtown LA. I didn't know you were in Paris. Sorry. <laughs> um, I had two totally different questions in my mind before I walked in, but interested in staying with the flow of this, I want to ask you, with people like Alan Splat, your son Gusana, or uh, Angela Badalamenti, it must have started in the beginning with trying to educate each other with each other's language and coming to a common understanding how you could achieve what you wanted. And, and through all that, you found something that was greater than anything either one of you could have come up with. But then, as more as you progress together and you go down the rabbit hole, the less you speak, and you end up working for hours in the same room, only saying two sentences. Is that? And how would you explain that? How do I explain that? Yes. <laughs> so well, I'm I, I, you know, in that space is that that's almost like how, how would you feel like to be one of them? Said. Um, I sort of know what you're talking about. Um, in beginning, um, see, um, yeah, so when you're, you know, you're, let's say you're making a film, you're the filmmaker, and you've got ideas that have, you know, gone, come together, and you have a script, right? You have a script. A script is organized ideas. Now you start working with other people, and you have to talk to them in such a way that they get on the same road that those ideas dictate. And so you talk and you talk and you talk, and in case with working with Angelo or working with Alan, you know, we start making sounds, and, and I would say, no, 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 that's not the right thing because of this and this, this, the idea wants to be this over here. And they say, oh, 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 okay, and they start playing different sounds or different music, and then I'd say, no, it's not quite right, it's too fast, it's too this. And then make talk, 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 and pretty soon they get closer and closer to the road, and then one day, they, or one moment, they get on the road. And then they understand. Now they're with you, they're with the ideas, and you can, you can go. And so I'll go. Thank you for your answer, that was good. Thank you. Uh, hello, Mr. Lynch. Um, uh, I might start a bit nervous, so just put up with me and I'll get there in the end. But, <laughs> so I've, I've had this idea for a short film for a, a long period of time, and I, I, I'm really in love with the core idea, but my issue is like I get slammed with, as you might describe it, like a thousand little fish or bigger fish connected to that main core idea, and then I start trying to put them in at least uh, framework that I like, but then they kind of like a uh, group of wolves and stuff kind of start tearing apart that core idea, and then I look at it and I'm like, no, that's not what I want. How have you ever experienced something like that, and how would you go about kind of making them more succinct and like working together as a unified force rather than tearing it apart and not saying anything? Yeah, when you try to force something. Um, it can happen that way. It, it ruins the, the original idea. And so, uh, do you practice transcendental meditation? Uh, no, sir, but I do this thing where I'm in the shower or on the train, <laughs> and I'll just be really quiet and listen to everything around me, but just observe it, not try and touch it or think about it. Okay, so uh, with transcendental meditation, you actually dive into the unified field, unity, oneness, and it really sort of helps uh, with what you're talking about because they say everything is one anyway, and so in that way of thinking, anything will fit into anything. It it just but how it how it goes, you have to get the the idea to see how they fit. So I think um, uh, transcending every day really serves that process of seeing how these re completely different kind of elements can live together, and that would help you uh, with your your the thing you're uh, struggling with right now. It would really help. 
Okay, thank you very much. There's a way that they all fit together. There's a way. I'll keep going and it still works. Thank you. Good deal, buddy. <laughs> very much for your time. Um, yeah, I've got two questions. Uh, the first one, uh, the first one I had was, I was just wondering, what was your experience like with uh, going to film school yourself? Uh, coming from uh, the point of view of, I find it tricky sometimes balancing the kind of inspiration, breathing in new ideas, good ideas and uh, uh, things like that, but also balancing that kind of influx of noise with your own personal, like, uh, exploration of creativity and that sort of thing, and I, yeah, I struggle to kind of um, uh, find a good balance with that. How, yeah, what was your experience like with that personally? I don't, I don't really believe in school, right? Um, but uh, I, I think in school you can learn many things, though technical things, and 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 sometimes you're in with students that you inspire one another so it's a good it can be a very good environment yeah. but you can also really um, the fun learning is learning by doing sure. so if you get an idea i would i, I just would start working on it and yeah. um, make it make it happen and along the way most of filmmaking is common sense so you can figure out things and really have a great time learning by doing. You might have to shoot things two times, you know, after having you know learned the first time that that didn't work. But you learn by doing, and and in doing, you um, can get way more ideas. You can experiment and you can try these things, and and it really it's really great learning by doing. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, my second question uh, was a bit more broad, um, and I was just wondering, uh, I listened to Catching Big Fish uh, a couple of years ago, and that was pretty influential on uh, my creative journey, And uh, but I also have, uh, I also see a great role in my life, um, faith playing a great role in uh, transcendence, uh, and I was just wondering if uh, you see many of what, 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 what plays a role? Uh, faith. Faith. Faith? Yeah. Faith? Yeah. Uh -huh. And I was just wondering uh, if you see any uh, connection between the two, um, especially within the idea of uh, kind of transcending yourself. I, I feel like a lot of the times when I'm experiencing transcendence, I'm, I'm losing a sense of, um, uh, I'm, I'm kind of uh, unaware of myself. And I experience that through faith a lot. And I was just wondering if you see any connections between the two personally. Okay, so um, it's, a, it's a tricky question. I would say that, um, for instance, uh, there's a there, machine called the EEG machine yeah. where they, they can um, see what's going on with a human being's brain. Mm -hmm. And they've tested many forms of meditation on the EEG machine. And they can see on the graph when a person truly transcends, experiences the transcendent, the ocean of pure consciousness, the unified field. Yeah. They can see that. And it, it's the other forms of meditation might give some relaxation, might give some, you know, calmness or whatever, but you don't transcend. Right. Faith is a different sort of thing. Yeah. And faith is, is very, very good. But I would say to you, learn transcendental meditation. Yeah. Experience it in transcending, and it, it, it's, it will, um, you'll, see, uh, um, you'll see that it's a unique, most powerful, sublime, euphoric experience. And, um, and you can, with this technique, you can do it, you know, every day. It's yeah. so beautiful, yeah. and life gets better and better. Yeah. Great. Right. Thank you very much. Jeez. You're very welcome. Hi, David. It's Andrew here. Thanks so much for your time. Um, two parts to one question for you. Uh, firstly, being what would be the best uh, sort of secret advice you'd give for screenwriters in pitching? What makes the best pitch from your point of view? 
And secondly... The, the, the best pitch for a screenwriter? Yeah. And the second part to that would be, how do you use the meditation to calm your nerves when you know you've got to go out there and sell something that you've written and worked on for so long? That's a good, both good questions. I think um, if you just turn the tables and you say someone's going to come in and tell them, you about their screen playing, um, I think you would go um, for a person who is very uh, uh, enthusiastic and really believed in what they were, you know, uh, pitching. And uh, so that would be my advice, is uh, you're, if you love your idea, you love your story, that will come across if you if you you know go in and, and pitch it. You you'll you'll you know your your love and your enthusiasm and your understanding of your story will come across. So don't go for an answer. Go in as if you had a million dollars in your pocket. You don't not worried about losing the job, and uh, give it all that enthusiasm that's in your heart and your mind. Right. What was it? What was the next question? The next one was around uh, what. In terms of uh, TM, how you sort of calm your nerves when you know you've got to go up there? Okay, and... okay, yeah, that's, you know, um, it's, um, there's, you know, uh, there's this thing where uh, if you, if you, you know, meditate uh, for a while, um, you just get more self-assured more able to um, to do things um, in a in a more you know steady uh, strong way, and um, so I say it it serves the work. And it makes you more self assured, and uh, so those situations that used to almost kill us get easier to do to take. And it it the, like they say the answer is always uh, throughout time. They say the, the real stuff comes from within. So it's money in the bank to transcend. It'll serve all avenues of life. And uh, it'll give you that strength to, you know, to do what you have to do. Great. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. You, you bet. Uh, hi, David. My name's Oliver. Um, my question is really related to, obviously, you recommend to kind of dive into ideas and kind of really have the time to meditate and to think about those things and have the space for creativity to flourish. But how do you approach kind of, I guess, the more negative emotions that may come when you're working on a project, like frustration or stress? Um, any of those kind of emotions, do you feel that there is, do you harness those or do you prefer to try and uh, get those to drop away and that's where uh, the, you're working at the best? Okay, so like I said earlier, um, you can't pretend to be not stressed. Uh, you're just stressed. With people, you know, transcendental meditation is, you know, uh, the number one stress, stress buster. It's way more than that, but it does for sure uh, get rid of stress. And stress can kill you. So I say learn transcendental meditation. And uh, that's part of the garbage that will lift away stress, traumatic stress. Veterans who suffer from post-traumatic stress, they start transcendental meditation and, and they say, I've got my life back again. All this torment and pressure comes out. And now more and more human beings and more and more kids are suffering from stress at a younger and younger age. And it's, it's a horrible thing. They're filled with torment. This relieves that, and it brings in all those positive qualities, money in the bank, and, and life just gets more and more fun. Life, we're supposed to be happy campers. We're supposed to enjoy living, and the answer is there within. Transcend every day, and, and watch things get really good. All right. Thank you. You bet.